Nowadays, people seem to be more carefree with regard to following COVID restrictions. Our government, as we know, almost decided to already put the country back to alert level zero, where COVID restrictions are supposed to be lifted. But let's look first at the countries where these restrictions have been lifted early this year and assess if it is indeed worth removing the restrictions and safe enough to put our lives back to pre-pandemic times. The question is, are we ready? Let's watch this. Now, let's look at the current COVID situation in countries where COVID restrictions have been lifted. Let's start with England. In February of 2022, England finally lifted all COVID-19 restrictions, including masking, where more than 81% of adults have received a booster vaccine dose. With cases continuing to fall after record highs caused by highly transmissible Omicron variant. However, since the lifting of the restrictions by Prime Minister Boris Johnson, England started to notice and experience another wave of COVID infection brought about by Omicron BA2 variant spike soaring past 50% across all regions in the country, resulting in both case and hospitalization surge starting early of March 2022, which was noted to be incredibly fast increase in both cases. What is further alarming from the COVID-19 surge in England is the surge of cases of COVID infection among kids. And if you look closely at the latest data with regard to the surge, it is even worse now. The latest hospital data just came out March 13, showing that almost 1,600 admissions still increasing and up to 50% higher than two weeks ago. What is alarming is that the infection is continuing to go up in all regions and in all age groups. So going by previous Omicron variant, about half might be incidental admissions, meaning admitted due to other reasons, but was shown to be positive during the admission as part of the routine PCR test, but also are clearly showing the increase in community transmission. Now, one important consideration for the surge is that booster protection may be waning, especially among older adults who are almost six months out. But another vulnerable group have been sharp increases in children's admissions, highlighting another surge in COVID in children, which is for now the third wave in seven months, which was worse than in January of 2022. Now, I believe that those parents or anybody who are assuming that a previous COVID surge will stop kids from getting event infected again needs more detailed data and these are merely assumptions of facts with no proofs as basis. What we know so far is that each surge comes with more school disruption, more admissions, more long COVID syndrome in the future, and more teachers and parents infected. It is for this reason that I want more data for the Philippines, especially after alert level one, before assuming it is safe for a face-to-face -face schooling, especially with increasing crowd gathering due to elections, which I believe can result in another COVID surge in the next few weeks. As we know, teen vaccination is still pretty low and vaccination of the 5 to 11s can't come soon enough. And the question is how many more weeks do we need for these kids to face the surge unprotected? Now let's look at the data of what happened 42 days after Denmark dropped masking and lifted restrictions. Again, if you can see the graph, there's a significant increase in cases, including deaths. Clearly, therefore, after Europe lifted COVID restrictions, 
positivity is surging across all parts of UK, showing that this new COVID-19 surge is very, very real. Apparently, the new wave that has already started in Europe is from BA2, which is the Omicron variant 2, which is worse than the original Omicron variant already in many European countries. And that removing COVID restrictions and mask protections only will cause more deaths, sickness, disabilities of many more people. Now let's talk about what happens in Hong Kong and China. Is this a new variant? We all know that these are two areas in the world that want to adopt a zero COVID policy. The increasing surge apparently is not due to new variants, but still rather from the more transmissible BA2 variant of Omicron. We all know that Hong Kong per capita mortality is now triple the next highest mortality country right now and is approaching the New York City 2020 levels of deaths. The data from Hong Kong clearly shows that this BA2 variant is not mild, especially if they infect the unvaccinated and the undervaccinated populations, where BA2 is very dominant. In fact, hospitals and morgues are overflowing, and Hong Kong has never had a surge of this kind before, not until this BA2 showed up. However, if you look at the cases of Hong of BA2 infections translating into deaths, both in Hong Kong and New Zealand, there's a big difference in terms of mortality. If you look closely at New Zealand, where only 2% are unvaccinated, and therefore the surge did not equate to increased mortality in contrast to more unvaccinated in Hong Kong, showing that true enough, being vaccinated and getting the booster do is very beneficial in protecting us against hospitalization and increasing death. At the present time, countries are not following recommendations from the World Health Organization with regard to lifting restrictions. We all know that the World Health Organization is in fact concerned that several countries are drastically reducing testing as this inhibits our ability to see where COVID-19 virus is, how fast it is spreading, and rapidly evolving. For now, we know that testing will remain a vital tool in our fight against the pandemic as part of the comprehensive strategy. And this is where most countries who have lifted the restrictions are lacking nowadays. The Philippine government has in fact started lifting restrictions since alert level one. As a result, businesses have been operating at full capacity and people can now travel freely irrespective of age or comorbidities. And therefore, you see crowds in malls and restaurants and do, true enough, economy seems to be on the upswing. But it may not be as rosy as it seems as COVID virus, as we know, is a very unstable virus that keeps on changing and thereby limits our ability to predict what variants will come next. It is therefore very important that we should not lower our guards, especially in removing your mask. Our country still needs to get at least 70% of the total population vaccinated, especially the vulnerable population, which at present we still need to vaccinate the 2.4 million older adults who have not even received even a single dose. For me, therefore, it is not right yet to lift restrictions. If we look at the experiences in Europe, UK, and US, we still need to continue masking, physical distancing, ensuring proper ventilation and hand hygiene, so we can hopefully be ready as a country to face the challenges of the next COVID-19 wave. However, if we stop the safety protocols too soon, we will be wasting the lessons we have learned from the past two years, being alive and living with COVID-19. Again, this is Dr. Jerry Tan. Stay safe always. See you again soon. 